Actually, no, we can start another one. That's easy. That one's really easy. Which one? Uh, let's start on number four. Five. Five. My bad. Okay. Let me blow this up a little bit. Okay. Well, I love this new capability. In fact, I can blow it up even further. And now I can take a snapshot and have all kinds of room to write. Look how crisp that is, too. Oh, fantastic. I, unfortunately, on an earlier session today, this thing locked up. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah, and I couldn't exit it without rebooting the computer in the middle of GoToMeeting. So, oh, that's... first time that's happened to me. Mm -hmm. So, number five, what's the very first thing we're going to see about? What's always, when you're trying to graph a function, what's the most important points? The y-intercept and then the slope. And well, you're not wrong, but uh, this is going to be a quadratic. So the x-intercept. It's not a straight line, so it's not really going to have a slope. No. But it's going to have some x-intercepts. Mm-hmm. Where are the x-intercepts? At 4, then minus 2. Yeah. So we know that the graph crosses right there. Uh-huh. Right there. Yep. Okay. Now, let's... We also know that if x is 0, what is y? Um, if x is 0, then y would have to be 0 as well. No. Plug in zero right. for x and figure out what y is. So negative four and then two. So what's y? Negative four. Negative four comma two. No, um, y is a number. Here's what I'm doing. I'm plugging okay. in zero for x. Right. Well, that's the same oh, as and minus four two. times two. That's my bad. Yeah, so minus 8. Okay. So we know that it goes through that point right there also. Uh-huh. So we have three points that it goes through. Yep. And we know it's a parabola. Yep. So we so can just connect opens them. Right? Which way? Up or down? Uh, opens up. Correct. And it's not, that's not the vertex. Vertex is going to be somewhere down there. But right. I can graph that much of it just by knowing the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Cool. Okay. What's the domain of that? Um, negative infinity to positive infinity. Yeah. Actually, the, they yeah. allow you to write it like that? All reals? X, yep. X is an element of real numbers. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a little more than that. It's something mm -hmm. like that. What's the range? Also, y is an element of all real numbers. Look at the graph. Tell me what the range is. Um, y is greater than or equal to negative 8. Almost. If negative 8 was the vertex, that would be true. Oh, but it's not the vertex. Ah, the vertex actually is right there somewhere. Where is the vertex? It's negative 9. Hold on, um, we've got x-intercepts at minus 2 and 4. What's halfway in between now? Oh, minus, so that would be 1. Yeah, so, so that's where the vertex is. That's the line of symmetry. Uh -huh. That's the vertex, and as all we have to do is figure out the y-coordinate of that. Which is 1. No. Right. Oh, the y-coordinate. The y-coordinate. The x-coordinate yeah. is 1. So plug yep, in so one y for x. Tell me what y is. Um, so y is equal to 1 minus 4 and then 1 plus 2. So it would be minus 3 plus 3, which is 0. What's minus 3 times plus 3 again? Did I multiply by 0? That's what I did. Yeah, so minus 9. Okay. That's that point right there. That's that minus 9. Okay. That curve does not go south of minus 9. No. So tell me what the range is. 
Um, so the range is y is greater than or equal to negative 9. Correct. Cool. All right. Let's see. Um, let me take a look at some of these and make sure that they are good. Don't like number 6. Yeah, that one was confusing. We're just supposed to do the... Um, uh, the uh, the ones like the odd ones that I haven't done yet. Um, let's see here. Well, well first Actually, of all, uh, you need to know how to do number six, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I erased that on this paper. Where's the vertical asymptote on number six? Um, you've got it at minus four. Where should? Yeah. It? Wouldn't that be? Um. In fact, no, we're way backwards here. There's no vertical asymptote at all on that. Oh, there isn't? No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, just a horizontal asymptote. Here, okay. let's talk about this problem, because I, I don't want to I don't want to pass this up. No, uh, yeah, definitely. It's I tell you. too important. Uh, mm -hmm. So... First of all, exponential functions tend to look like this. Or if the number is less than 1, they'll look mm -hmm. like this. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, we do have a minus 4 here that's going to lower the horizontal asymptote. Because when the curves look like this, there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Okay. Okay? And uh -huh. when you do a vertical shift by 4 units, you're basically lowering the horizontal asymptote by 4 units. So okay. I now have a horizontal asymptote right there. That makes sense. Okay. Now... If, y equals if I just had y equal 0.5 to the x minus 4, well, when this number is less than 1, it goes upper left to lower right. In other words, it would look something like this. Okay. Okay? Okay. And it would go through the point 0, comma, Minus 3. You see why? That's 0, comma, minus 3. It, first of all, let's make sure we're talking about the same thing. Uh, well, no, yeah. That I mean, function, not the one you've got in the problem. No. Talking about this function here, where mm -hmm. I've lowered my horizontal asymptote by 4 units based on the minus 4, mm -hmm. and I'm drawing it from upper left to lower right based on that asymptote. And the reason I know it goes through minus 3 is because when I set x equal to 0, any number to the 0th power is 1. Mm -hmm. 1 minus 4 is minus 3. So I know it goes through that point right there. Well, yeah. I can do a pretty good draw of that. It's asymptotic mm -hmm. to that asymptote. keeps getting closer and closer. So that's kind mm -hmm. of what this, what I have circled, would look like. Okay. Now, what's the difference? The only difference is that plus 2. What's the plus 2 do? Um, it shifts it up to, no. or, right? It's inside, or no, no, no. it's inside the function that makes it a horizontal transformation. Okay, it's so it outside. The minus four, the minus four was outside the function. That makes it a mm -hmm. vertical transformation. Okay. When you Down have four. the transformation inside the function, it's always horizontal. Okay. So this is two units which way? Um so it would be two units to the um to the left. Um, yeah, since it's inside on the... Okay. Yeah. It's always opposite if it's on the inside. You're right. It is always opposite. Plus 2 means left. Okay? Right. So this mm -hmm. point here, which is 0, comma, minus 3, gets mm -hmm. shifted 
two units to the left to right there. Okay. Now my curve looks pretty much the same. Just goes through that point. Uh -huh. And the green is my result. Mm -hmm. Now let me erase the black. Okay. <laughs> Um, let's see. So we've accounted for everything. We've accounted for the fact that's less than one mm -hmm. by going upper left to lower right instead of the opposite. Right. We've accounted for the shift horizontally of two units to the left. And we've accounted for the shift vertically of four units down. Now, okay. the domain on these exponential functions is what? Look at the graph. What is the domain? Um, so, if you look at the graph, would it just be x as an element of our own numbers? Yes. Mm -hmm. In other words, domain always means when you're looking at the horizontal movement. Right. And this goes clearly to negative infinity and positive infinity. And there's no point in between where it's not there. In other words, no. I'll draw black over that so we can see that the domain is all real numbers. Okay. Okay. What's the range? You can and then the range. Not negative infinity to positive infinity. What's the lowest point on this thing? Um, negative four. No, negative okay. four. Is that, so, is that negative four? Uh-huh. So tell me okay. the range in any number of ways. Uh, y is greater than or equal to negative 4. Not equal. Oh, strictly. You see why it's either. never equal? Uh-huh. It, it can never be. It does not ever touch negative 4. It just approaches it. As x goes in this direction to the right, we just get closer and closer to that horizontal asymptote, but we never are equal to minus 4. Right. That would require that to be 0. And there is mm -hmm. no value of x that will make that zero. Impossible. No. So you're never going to reach minus 4. Mm -mm. So the range is that. y is greater than minus 4. You, you, you had it. You just had it backwards. Okay. And yeah, you had it less than minus 4. Uh-huh. So you had a couple I things it backwards. It's... That's not right. In other words, it's all real numbers for the domain, and it's y is greater than minus 4 for the range. Okay. All right. Let me... You tell me what next. I don't know what the lines and the circles mean, so... <laughs> no, you're good. Um, let's do number 8. What shape is this thing? This equation is what shape? Um, it's going to be a... What kind of an equation? Is it? is it a cubic, a quartic, a quadratic, a linear? Quadratic okay. equation. Correct. That's important because quadratics are always what shape? Uh, just, what are they? Parabolas. They're always parabolas? Yeah. Always. Okay. In other words, okay. they either look like this, either look like this, or like that. Uh, okay. That's that. That's the only okay. shape that a quadratic is going to be. Okay. Okay. So we know we're looking at a parabola. And the most important part, point on a parabola is what? Um, the vertex. This is in vertex format. Where is the vertex? In other words, uh, negative yeah, 3, comma 4. Yeah, negative 3, 4. So if I go to negative... Actually, would it be positive? Because since there's a negative on the outside? Not yet. No? Not yet. No. Okay. The vertex is the opposite sign of that and the regular sign of that. So okay. negative 3, comma 4. Now, the negative sign that's leading tells us what? this thing open up or down? Down. 
So it's going to look something like that. Right. Only I don't know really where to draw it through the axis. axis. No, me neither. Do we know a Y intercept? Um, no, we don't. Actually, we do. The Y intercept is usually the easier intercept to solve for. Would it just be Y equals 4? No. What is true about the X intercept? Excuse me. What is true about the X value when you're on the Y intercept? It's just the opposite. The Y intercept. Right. The Y intercept is somewhere on the Y axis. What is the X value of all of those points that I am drawing? Uh, zero. Ah, that's a huge point in mathematics. Your Y intercept occurs when X is zero and your X intercept occurs when Y is zero. Okay. So if I want to solve for the Y intercept, I just set X equal to zero. Well, okay. what does Y become? What is Y of zero equal to? Uh, so it'd be Y of zero is equal to uh, three squared plus four. So what about that minus sign? Minus three squared, so which squared. is still nine. No, it isn't. That minus sign is not being squared. This is the only part that's being squared. So square that. What do you get? Um, you get nine. Okay, and the minus sign is still there. So, so it's minus, minus nine, plus, nine four. plus four. Okay. What is that? Um, so it would be negative five. Ah, so I know that this parabola goes through that point right there, where x is zero and y is minus five. Right. Now, the other thing I know about parabolas is that they are symmetric about uh -huh. the line of symmetry. And the line okay. of symmetry always runs right through the vertex. Right. So I know this thing looks like this. Now, I can figure out a point over there. What is that point? Um, that this point. point what's this? This point right there is zero comma minus five. Right. What's this point? That would be uh, negative six comma five. Very good. Cool. Negative six comma minus five. Minus five. We're still below the x-axis. Yep. Now, that's three points. That's all you really need to define a parabola. Right. Any three points will define a parabola. Notice okay. what I have not found is the x-intercepts. Uh -huh. And to answer this question, I'm not sure I need the x-intercepts. I don't really need the x-intercepts. So, no. The only thing we're asking for is domain and range. What's the domain? What's always the domain in these problems? Um, x is an element of all real numbers. What's the range? Um, and then it would be y is strictly less than um, uh, positive 4. Can y ever be 4? No. <laughs> Look at the curve. Can y ever be 4? Well, then yeah. So what should the answer be? Or equal to. y is greater than or equal to minus less, 4. Less than or equal to 4. Plus four. That covers. In other words, right there, yeah, y is 4. Uh -huh. When x is minus 3, y is 4. You plug okay. minus 3 here for x, you get mm -hmm. 0 plus 4. So y, it can be equal to 4. Yep. Since it can be, it's got to be less than or equal to. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's look at the next one because... This is not quadratic in nature. No, it's not. This is what in nature? What kind of curve is this going to be? Um, this is going to be a... Here, let me label these. That's quadratic. Right. That's exponential. That's mm -hmm. logarithmic. What is this called? 
So this one have to be uh, hyperbolic. Oh, hi oh, I remember this. We briefly like went over. Yeah, if you have something of the nature of that, that's hyperbolic, meaning it looks like this and this. Okay. Or it doesn't have to be 1 over x. It can be x plus 2 over x minus 5. That's also hyperbolic in nature. Okay. Okay, and that's an important consideration because when you're drawing a hyperbolic function, the most important thing is to find your vertical asymptote and your horizontal asymptote and then draw your function about that grid. Okay. Where's your vertical asymptote? Um, vertical asymptote. So that's always in the denominator. Right. It's when all, when it only where the denominator is equal to zero. Right. That's always the vertical asymptote. Yep. Where is it? I just got to be on the last math test over this one. Um, so yeah. it would be x is equal to 5. Yeah. For the, yeah. Cool. You got a B on your last math test? I did. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Real good. So there's the vertical asymptote. Where's my horizontal asymptote? Um, so the horizontal I asymptote. Well, I know it. Yeah, you look at the um, numerator. If it's equal to zero, so it would be x equals minus two. No. Y equals minus two. Then. No, 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 no. No, that's not right. No. Here's how you get the horizontal asymptote. If the powers of x are the same in the numerator as they are in the denominator, then it's the ratio of their coefficients. What is the ratio oh, okay. of their coefficients? They are the same. That's x to the one. That's x to the one. So it'd be y is equal to 1, right? Exactly. Is that how it goes? That's okay. exactly how it goes. Cool. In other words, you look at the ratio of the coefficients. That could be x squared. That could be x squared. I would uh -huh. still have a horizontal asymptote at y equal 1. Cool. Because they're the same power, the maximum power in the numerator would be 2. The maximum power in the denominator would be 2. It's the ratio of their coefficients, which is 1 over 1. Cool. Okay. So now that we have our basic grid, we're in mm -hmm. good shape. We know what hyperbolic functions look like. It looks like either that right. or maybe it's in the like second that. and fourth quadrants. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be hyperbolic in the sense that the black is asymptotic with the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote, and so is the green. Mm -hmm. so either one could be true. Now, which one is it? Mm -hmm. How do I figure it out? Um, how would we figure this out? So we would do... Pick a value for x. That's the way you figure it out, always. Okay. Pick a easy value for x. Let's do 1. How about 0? Zero? 0 is as easy as it gets. Mm -hmm. what's, what's y when x is 0? Um, 2, comma. Not comma. Uh, y is a number. Plug in 0 for x. What number do you get for y? You get 2. Plug in 0 for x. 0 right there, 0 right there. What is y? 2 over negative 5. Uh-huh. That's negative 2 fifths. Okay. Okay. So, okay. if I look at my curve and I go to x equals 0, uh -huh. and I've got a negative answer, negative 2 fifths. Well, my mm -hmm. horizontal asymptote's at 1. Mm -hmm. Is my black curve or my green curve the correct curve? Um, the green curve. No, the green curve is positive. It's greater than 2 when x is 0. Well, the top one's negative, though, isn't it? Or... No. Here, here, follow my logic here, Dylan. This is really important. First of all, there's x equals 0. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Now, what I'm saying is that when x is 0, y is negative 2 fifths. Well, 
there's only one curve there that can possibly be negative two fifths. Mm -hmm. It's not my green curve. My green curve is above the plus two line. Mm -hmm. The lowest my green curve could be would be two. It looks like it maybe is three or four. I haven't drawn these exact. Is all I've done is the black curve is in the first and third quadrant, the green curve is in the second and fourth quadrant. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out which one I have. And okay. if when x is zero, y is negative, it's got to be the black curve. Only the black curve is in negative territory when x is zero. Now, okay. I haven't drawn it correctly. I've got the black curve being at minus two when x uh -huh. is zero. But as all right. that means is, is that I just didn't draw it right. In other words, it, it draws maybe closer, still asymptotic to those asymptotes, but mm -hmm. now it's going through negative two-fifths. Okay. Okay. It's not that we have it exact, it's that we know it's the only thing we have to figure out is whether it's in first and third or second and fourth. That's it. Uh -huh. So okay. you pick a value of x, you figure out what y is, that mm -hmm. will tell you whether it's first and third or second and fourth. Okay, gotcha. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Now, the goal was to graph it. I assume we wouldn't have graphs here if that goal wasn't to graph it. No. What's the domain? So the domain for this one, x is an element of all numbers. Can x be right. 5? Um, yes, it can. No, look at the graph. You ever see x b5? No. That's what a vertical asymptote means. You can never have the graph co cross a vertical asymptote. There is no place on this graph where x is going to be 5. Okay. When x is so five, x is now an of all number is not equal to 5. Then. Yeah, but notice that if x were 5, we'd be dividing by 0. That violates the first law of mathematics. Right. So x can never be 5. So part of the domain has to exclude x being 5. So you could say all reals except x cannot be equal to 5. Mm -hmm. What's the range? Y is an element of all real numbers not equal to 1. Good. Now, it is sometimes possible to cross horizontal asymptotes. Mm -hmm. These can occasionally look like this, where I would go up and actually cross it and then come back and approach the horizontal asymptote like that. Interesting. So yeah. if that were the case, then y would actually be all real numbers. Okay. You can cross horizontal asymptotes. You can never, ever cross vertical asymptotes. So 90% of the times, that's going to look like that. Okay. And gotcha. if you wanted to know whether it did cross the horizontal asymptote, set y equal to 1 and see if there's a solution. In other words, does this have a solution? And you'll find out that it does not. That would give me x minus 5 equals x plus 2. Now I got minus 5 equal plus 2. That can't be true. Okay. So there's no, a solution to that. It never crosses the horizontal asymptote. This is the proper curve. Okay. And the range is exactly what you said. All real numbers except y equal to 1. Cool. It's good to know these things at the top. It's good to know that that's quadratic, this is hyperbolic in nature, this is exponential in nature, and that's logarithmic in nature. For sure. Because that tells you what the basic graph is going to look like. Uh-huh. Exactly. Okay. All right, Dylan. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I will talk to you on Wednesday. Okay. Sounds good. Bye-bye.